Is she in the waiting room? No, I no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. I. She I just mean, said she's trying to get back in. So yeah. Well, we can approve the minutes. Um, Alyssa, do you have a chance to review the minutes? Here she is. I did. Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, approve the minutes from the June 8th meeting. Okay. Yeah, Jaden says he is reporting. Thank you. Okay, uh, Sam, we just had a motion to approve the minutes. Um, any questions or concerns? Okay, we could have had a second, but I think this second is obvious. All those in favor? Aye, thank you very much. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, next item is board chair election. Uh, but before we get to that, I would like to read a statement. So uh, this is really for our audience. Um, I think those of you who are who are here in, in the uh, Board of Health group and the health department are aware of this, but I have submitted my resignation from the Board of Health effective July 31st. And uh, it has been a challenging two years, but I'm glad that I've had the opportunity to serve the city of Greenfield and its citizens. I'm grateful for our outstanding health department director, Jennifer Hoffman, for her hard work and collaboration on the many issues we worked on together and for her leadership on so many other fronts. I'm grateful for our public health nurse, Megan Tudrin, whose relentless contact tracing for COVID was amazing. And our health inspectors, Nicole Glaybach and Ruben Arroyo, whose commitment and teamwork helped the health department function well. I'm grateful to the mayor for having uh, selected me to this position. Thank you, mayor. And of course, to my fellow board members, Alyssa Valbona and Samantha McIver, whose opinions I valued and whose support helped me manage my role as chair better. Thank you all. Okay. Um, I would like to, yeah, Jen, do you want to, yeah. I have just a couple of things to say about that. <laughs> uh, Nancy, you have led the Board of Health with fairness and had to make some of the toughest decisions in the years you have served. You have given direction to the Health Department and assisted us on several projects. You are always an optimist, you are encouraging and supportive to us all. Having you step down is a loss to the Board of Health and Health Department, and you will be greatly missed. Thank you for instilling in us the value of temperance and seeking for answers based in science. Most of all, thank you for your friendship and being there when we all felt weak and vulnerable. That strength is something not easily found in people today. On behalf of the Health Department, thank you for serving the City of Greenfield and <clears throat> guiding the health department. Your hard work and the love for the city is greatly appreciated by us all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor. Thank you, Nancy. Um, I too want to say thank you. I um, asked you to join the Board of Health at a very difficult time because I knew you and knew you could handle it and handle it well, and you have. It has been extremely difficult, you know, beginning in, in the early, well, early to middle days of COVID right on through today. Uh, it's been challenging for everyone for these last few years, the Board of Health, the Health Department. Everybody's done an extraordinary job. You've never had a health department in this city that ran and is run as well as this one. And I know that for a fact. Um, it's been around a while, so I greatly appreciate your service, and uh, by all means, change your mind, feel free to come back anytime. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate your, your kind words. 
And Jennifer, thank you for your kind words. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, with that, we will move on to the next item, which is um, board chair election. And I've had the um, uh, just a short conversation with uh, Alyssa Valbona, who has agreed to uh, step into the into the hot seat, <laughs> if I can say that, <laughs> uh, to be uh, chair of the board. And um, I, I just, you know, as I said, I've uh, appreciated your, um, your uh, steadiness and your help um, with, uh, with the board meetings in particular. And I know that I leave this um, board in good hands uh, with you at the helm. Um, so with that in mind, I'd like to uh, nominate Alyssa Valbona, or I move to, uh, I, I'm not sure if it's a move or a, a nomination, I think it doesn't matter, to uh, uh, nominate Alyssa Valbona to the position of chair of the Board of Health Greenfield um, beginning August 1st, 2022. So uh, second to the motion. Second. Thank you, Sam. Okay. Well, uh, any discussion? Anything? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. All right, Alyssa, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Nancy. And yeah. thanks so much again um, for all of your leadership and guidance over the last two years. It has been quite a time to be on a board of health. Um, and I really appreciate being able to work with you before um, stepping into this role and all that you, you've done for the city. Thank you. Well, I, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, if any of you uh, want to contact me and bounce things off of me, I'm available. Uh, just just uh, want to say that. So um, good luck, uh, Alyssa, and I will be eagerly following along and may, may be in your audience periodically uh, at, at the uh, future Board of Health meetings. So thank you. Thanks. Yeah, I hope to see you. Yeah. <laughs> good. Okay, so moving along with the uh, meaty matters um, of our meeting, and uh, not surprisingly, the first up is uh, COVID. Um, and I um, am interested, before you give your report, Megan, which of course is uh, always uh, uh, informative and important, um, I want to ask Jennifer if she will share a little bit of, uh, about the session that we had with our epidemiologist, Jack Sullivan, um, the end of uh, June, I think the 29th. Anyway, Jen. Thank you, Nancy. Um, Basically, um, Jack has been with us for a few months and he met with um, the other members of the grant that we're doing for contact tracing and that's the cities of uh, Montague, Deerfield and Sunderland. And he basically got all the numbers of COVID since March of 2020 till probably mid-June, I think. And he discussed basically um, what happened when certain restrictions were implemented and released. And uh, the way he approached the topic was extremely informative, very, I mean, it was all data-driven um, from each of our towns, but he focused on Greenfield because he was giving a presentation to Greenfield. He discussed um, the vaccines and their efficacy based on which vaccine you got, if there was a mixture of vaccines, length of time for vaccines. Um, and it was extremely informative. And um, I think that um, I could speak on behalf of the board and the health department, and as well as Megan, um, I learned a lot. Currently, he is getting um, an updated presentation for the school board. Um, to present and give that data and recommendations. And, um, and he's also working on clusters that we have had and the other towns have had to show how someone patient zero could expand out because we can discuss that and 
as till we're blue in the face. But once you actually see the flower petals coming off and, it, and then the vines that are attached, it's very hard um, to see. And when you see it, it's, it's pretty eye opening. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm very grateful for um, Jack for doing that work. It is a lot of work, thousands of people that he's going through and culling and uh, getting information from Megan and the other contact tracers um, and myself. So it's been great. It's been eye opening. And um, I think that our department feels a little bit stronger walking into the fall. Um, based on the knowledge we already have and then seeing the actual data that we have. Um, any other comments, Nancy, that I'm missing or Sam, I think you were there also, anything? Well, I, I think uh, one, of, one of the items that I, I mentioned to you, Jen, when we were speaking about it today that really impressed me was the effectiveness of masks. And what he was able to show is that periods of time when um, when there, there was a mask mandate in uh, in our community or, you know, this was I, I'm not sure if he showed data. Uh, just Massachusetts, but in, in any case, when the no, mask it was Greenfield, mandate, it, was it was basically Greenfield. Okay. Greenfield yeah. When the mask mandate was in place, there was no influenza. And of course, we have no, numbers of influenza cases in normal seasons. Um, so that was impressive to me the, that uh, that just the simple act of putting on that mask, how protective it is and what a great tool it was for us to to be able to slow down um, uh, COVID uh, enough so that, you know, the the numbers of cases that we could handle as a healthcare system and how important that was. Um, so that, that was, that was one of the takeaways for me and it, and the wastewater information, which, you know, I think the last time we met Megan, we just had a few weeks of that, but, um, uh, it's, it's unbelievable how, how effective that technology is doing the, the biobot or whatever it's, it's called, um, very effective. And I'm sure you'll have more to say about that, Megan. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's. Those are my thoughts. So our COVID cases are, um, they're hard to track, like, like we were saying earlier, because people are doing at-home tests. We have 40 confirmed positives in Greenfield so far this month. And I've had 18 phone calls from people that said that they're, um, they're positive on their at-home test, but there's no way to record that or track it. I just have been making a little check mark with their initials on a piece of paper and that's it. Um, but our wastewater, um, we started posting it on the Greenfield Health Department website, which is fantastic. So anybody can look at the trends. Um, we're currently this in the 71st percentile for the US. Um, it, you know, it's it's really hard to track, but numbers are so high. We have our, the majority of our cases are the BA5, which is the one that you're hearing about in the news all of the time. I think we still have the highest percentage in Massachusetts of the BA5. And I think that's probably because we're so close to Vermont and when they really spiked, um, that's when I started seeing the BA5 was when they were in the, the dark blue. Um, we also have monkeypox. I think you wanted to talk about this this time. There's 42 cases currently as of today in Massachusetts. Um, 350 something cases total in the U.S. There's no real treatment for the monkeypox. It's really um, people recover within two to four weeks. They're testing out different vaccines like the smallpox vaccine and things like that to see if it'll work for monkeypox. Right now, transmission, it's not spread through casual contact um, or conversations or doorknobs and things like that. Almost all of our cases have been through sexual contact. Um, so that's that's pretty much it. We, we encourage anybody that has any sort of bumps on their skin, they might even look really tiny at first to get checked out, um, especially if you know that you've had an exposure. Any, and um, the symptoms are also besides rash that might come a few days later, but fever, headache, sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, um, 
kind of the same things as COVID with the exception of the rash that comes later. Well, uh, I recall that uh, symptoms uh, tend to be milder though. I mean, people aren't getting really, really sick with it, but it's, it's highly contagious, um, especially in the blistering stages, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but the, va I thought the vaccine was thought to be effective now. It, it, there's different research on it. Um, there's nothing that says that it's definitely working that I can find anyway. Hmm. So there, so that's still a work in progress developing the vaccine. Yeah, it yeah. sounds like that. And it sounds like even if it is, if it gets up and running, it's not going to be something that they give to the whole population. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the, the recommendations I read from the Department of Public Health said if there's been an exposure within four days or uh, an exposure and what was the other thing? 14 days. Uh, I think just to 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 uh, prevent a worsening of the illness mm -hmm. with the two anyway. It was, uh, that's what I read. Sure. So. I have a question on the monkeypox. Um, is that a virus that now stays with you, like, you know, chicken pox leading to shingles, et cetera, et cetera? Do we know yet? Well, it's not it's not related to chicken pox, so that's important mm. to know. Mm. Okay. Um, it's a, it's in a different uh, uh, viral. It, it's it's in the category of smallpox, mm. uh, but not chicken pox. Can't remember the science around those things. Um, I'm not aware of any information that says it it uh, har it's harbored mm. in the nervous system or anywhere else in the body. I think once it's gone, I think it's gone. So. Yes, that's my understanding. Yeah. We had a briefing from the um, sexual and reproductive health um, division at DPH for our program. And, um, yeah. Supportive yeah, care is, goes yeah. away on its own. Uh, I, mean, I think it's, you know, it's, definitely sexually transmitted i think this that's the, the the population that it's spreading through right now um are the populations that are uh uh very sex sexually active primarily homosexual but i'm not sure if um uh you know if they're tracking heterosexual populations at all uh, well, yeah we don't um yeah you would know quite that. use that division yeah. In that way anymore, but um, it is a little more prevalent in men who have sex with men. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Megan, I did want to offer uh, an addendum on the um, uh, COVID report. I've been in communication with Jack Sullivan about um, about the uh, BA. Uh, four and BA five variants, and this was you know going back now uh, two weeks, and he told me that the that the data is, is, that it's a rapidly evolving thing, and he said that BA five now constitutes nearly sixty percent of the infections in Greenfield, and this is data from from the wastewater. Uh, and from isn't that correct? It's got to be wastewater um, data. Yeah, I think we're at 70% now. I can. Okay, this was as website. of one hour ago. <laughs> anyway, that's what he told me. <laughs> Maybe that, they updated it since this morning. I don't know. <laughs> and he said that the BA4 uh, is another 22%. So the two combined um, represent 82% of the infections in our vicinity, which is amazing i mean the ba4 and 5 were just a month ago it's like oh they're somewhere else guess what <laughs> they're here and then um jen after our conversation i asked him about the the one in india and he said this is the ba2.75 um it's listed as a um a variant of concern by uh the european cdc but there's only been a handful of cases here, so it's um, not yet a variant of concern here. It's one of interest, variant of interest. So, 
yeah, never a dull moment in the in the uh, realm of COVID, for sure. So, yeah, uh, Jen, you had your hand up. No, that was just a <laughs> flicking of the wrist. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, anything else on uh, either COVID or monkeypox? I'm um I'm looking on the state website right now, the BioBot website, and we're yep. at seventy one point four percent for BA five. Um, BA two dot one two is twenty eight point four percent, and zero BA four. That's the most up to date for BioBot. Okay, for so Franklin County. That's for Franklin County. Mm-hmm. And Franklin County really means us, since we're the only one that's doing yeah. um, <laughs> wastewater testing. Interesting. So his his uh, data differs from. I know. I don't know if I can share my screen or not. Um, I might have to make you co-host, Megan. Let me oh, get it. Oh, it says host disabled, but that's okay. I mean, anybody can look at it for the biobot. Yeah, yeah. Bio. Okay. Yeah, we don't need to take that right now. Jen? <laughs> um, and I was just notified... Uh, a little bit over an hour ago that uh, Massachusetts has its first triple E case out East. Um, so it is now that season where people should uh, at uh, dusk um, end on wear long pants, long shirts um, and bug spray and just be protective. Um, even though there's no cases in Western mass, it is becoming that season where um there is definitely going to be more mosquitoes around. Um, if there are any pots with water, tires with water, where water is accumulating, um, just to empty it out, flip over, you know, pots and cans or anything that collects water, um, so you just have less uh, chances of having any water collection. Even though we are now entering a very dry season in Western Mass, so that might not matter as much at this point. But uh, just to be aware of um, mosquitoes and transmission of disease. Can you put that uh, up on our website? Just reminders for people. 100% I will. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, I'd like to move on um, to a brief conversation about the Lunt property audit. Samantha and I, as well as um, Jennifer, attended the meeting between uh, that was uh, part of the PIP process to educate the people who are involved in the in the public involvement process. Uh, did I say Jack John Z- Ziegler, who's the head of the uh, audit division of the Western Mass Department of Environmental Protection. Um, And he outlined, he had a a very good straightforward presentation. He outlined um, the areas of non-compliance and the steps needed to uh, bring the city back into compliance. Um, He he, uh, pointed out that um, the uh, OTO, um, the LSP, which is a licensed site professional, um, needs a better definition of the disposal area of TCE contamination. For them, they they had it really limited to the Lunt property. What the state is looking for is anywhere where the TCE contamination has gone, and that includes um, through any potential migration uh, pathways, even if it's off the Lund property. And we know that, that it's migrated off the property through uh, uh, the water um, that is uh, below uh, the soil level. Um, so uh, Bruce Nicholson, who is the LSP, is supposed to submit the required phase two scope of work and has that, uh, Mayor, has that been submitted or he's still working? Well, it, he um, wanted to have a meeting with uh, Kim Longridge while John John's out or else he would have, I think his preference was to have the meeting with both of them, but John's out on his extended vacation. So he asked when he submitted it on or about July 1, 
uh, as a draft, would he okay. would would they be able to meet? And she re, um, refused to meet with him. I think he wanted to have better explanation of what it was they were looking for, so that he could better target what what he could con, what he could you know make a commitment to to doing. He just didn't feel like he had enough information from them. She refused to meet with him. So yes, he is. I believe I received an email yesterday saying that he will now revise it slightly and make it a non-draft <laughs> and submit it. Um, and then I have to submit it as well to the PIP group yeah. um, for their review and comment. There will be an extension asked for beyond the July 26th deadline. Okay, good. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm also aware from uh, that meeting that the there were numbers of uh, people who expressed unhappiness with the current LSP and were hoping uh, that that, uh, that person would be replaced. And um, I just would like to say that, you know, that obviously this is the mayor's decision um, that uh, whatever the mayor decides in this regard, um, it is clear that the DEP uh, will be much more involved in oversight um, mm -hmm. of the cleanup going forward. And having um, spent uh, several meetings with John Ziegler uh, discussing this, um, I feel very reassured uh, knowing that they are they're watching what's going on. And um, so I'm I'm very relieved and reassured by that. Um, and I wanted to, uh, and uh, Alyssa, I know you weren't able to attend that last uh, meeting, but I wanted to uh, ask if uh, either my board members had had further comments uh, about where we are in, in this uh, audit and cleanup process of the Lum property. I, I think that summary actually answered all of my questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think the, the meeting was super helpful. And I think with, even without having to ask questions, he answered pretty much everything that was kind of up. <laughs> Jennifer, any, anything I missed or that you would add? No, I, I think that he um, was very reassuring that the work was being done based on the scope that uh, Bruce Nicholson was following at the time um, and that um, looking back they could say you know retrospectively it's always easier to see things that are missed than as you're sometimes doing it and that's with any science um, and he's pointing out things that he just wanted clarified um, and he sounded that he I feel felt that uh, the LSP that we currently have is more than capable of doing it he was you know evaluated and had to get tested um, to be an LSP and, uh, and he's done great work. So I feel confident that the, uh, DEP is going to be following closely. Um, and, um, and I, I feel reassured by that presentation and the information that we've had with the DEP to this point. Thank you. Anything else before we move on? Okay, um, we have some property inspections and follow-up. Uh, Jen and uh, Nicole. Um, we have uh, several uh, properties that we have been following. Um, I, I wanted to talk about um, the property on Montague City Road. Um, because it's of concern to several people because it was a former um, auto uh, salvage place. And uh, the health department has been working unbelievably closely uh, with the person in, with that property. Megan has gone above and beyond, as well as uh, Ruben uh, Arroyo by visiting this gentleman. Um, he was in great need of medical care. Um, 
and he has, um, with persistence uh, from Megan um, and befriending Ruben, he has gotten the help he needs and the support he needs. Um, and uh, because prior he wasn't able to take care of his property and he's pretty much still not physically able to take care of his property. Um, but we are aware of the fines he accumulated. Uh, we are aware of everything going on. Uh, zoning and building are very aware of what's going on with that property. Um, so um, we have been monitoring him, um, but it's very difficult to get someone who's sick um, to maintain. Now, if they can't even maintain themselves, how are they going to maintain a property? Um, it's much more difficult. So, um, and he doesn't have help. Uh, we have another property um, that we recently condemned um, of a woman uh, who had a small fire last year. Um, and this will be coming to the board's attention. I'm uh, just giving an overview. Um, and she was living out of her car uh, for a while after this fire. Um, and I guess over the winter, she lived with her daughter. The damage to her house was minimal. Uh, she had great difficulty uh, reaching out to her insurance. Uh, MJ had somebody trying to help her, but that grant ended and that help disappeared. Needless to say, uh, we got a complaint from the DPW uh, that the water department didn't want to go into our house because of black mold. We visited the site, uh, Nicole and I, and there was a tent on her property with a bed in the tent and a commode and other personal belongings. There was a kitchen table outside. The grounds around the property were very well maintained. She was keeping her gardens and her raspberry bushes, um, but not the house. At this point, the house has a tree on its roof and it's becoming a lot more damage and I'm sure insurance is not gonna cover it. At that point, I condemned her property and I told her that she was not allowed to be in a tent. Um, she's not living with her daughter because of conflict. Um, her daughter just drops her off big gallons of water so she could sponge bathe in the tent. Um, so, I told her she would have to write the board a letter for permission while we try to get a contractor to help her with her home uh, for permission, because she has nowhere to stay, to stay in this tent because it's considered temporary housing. I think you guys remember that whole conversation. Um, and the letter, I gave her two weeks to write this letter to the board. The letter was due yesterday. She did not provide a letter. So um, I'm, you know, I'm trying to decide what to do with this case at this point, because if I move through with the cond condemnation and telling her she can't be in a tent, I don't want her living in a car, but this will come to the board's attention in more detail. So I just wanted to let you know that. Um, so it's a very difficult case. Um, we have other problems uh, with other properties, but they're pretty much being managed um, we're holding some properties that have been difficult, accountable at this point. Um, one of the things we're coming uh, into a lot of problems with are people that are not mowing and saying they're pollinator gardens. They are obviously not pollinator gardens. Um, pollinator gardens meet certain criteria and I will provide that to the board. Um, there was a very famous case several years back um, where uh, it actually went to court over someone not mowing um, and the health department was heavily criticized for that, um, saying that their energy should be spent elsewhere. On that note, um, we don't mind pollinator gardens. No mowing in May, I am in support of, and I was gonna bring that to the board because bees are coming out of their little rest and they need to have food and energy. So no mow May, I think has some really good benefit uh, you know, on an environmental concern. But when weeds and grass grow very high and they are harborages for other insects and rodents and other things, it becomes an issue. Um, I'm not saying we're going to do anything. I just think that we should, board at some point, should discuss pollinator gardens and classify pollinator gardens. And I'll get literature to the board 
um, just so we can send out to people what a pollinator garden should be and what it is not for education. Um, and I just wanted support of the board to do so. Thank you. Um, we uh, also have the temporary Title V agent. Do you want to put that out there now? Do you still need a, us to uh, yeah. approve that? Yes. Um, so uh, good news is, is I am uh, pretty much looking to purchase a home. And this home has a septic system. And I'm usually the one who signs off on plans in the city. And it would be an, a conflict if I review the plans. Um, so I asked a colleague of mine to, if they would be willing to uh, review the plans and be at the Title V when the time comes. They agreed, but in order to do so, um, he needs to um, have a temporary uh, approval from the board for this one address only um, to do so. I move that uh, Randy Crozier, Crozier. Crozier be assigned a temporary Title V agent for a single property. In Greenfield. In Greenfield. I could I could email you the information. I'll second that motion. Date? You want to date? You. <laughs> and then we can now we can yeah. Well, we can finagle it. Okay. I, All right. You, uh, got, you, got, you got the motion, Nicole. I can't hear you. Sorry. Can you say? Well um. I move that we assign a temporary Title V agent to. Randy Crozier for a single property in Greenfield this month. The third perk was done today. The plans should be drawn up um, hopefully within a week and or so. So I'm hoping I would say August. -ish. Okay. So just say till the end of August. How's that? So give it enough. Okay. How's that? Everyone got that? All right. Second to the motion. I'll second the motion. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Randy, you have your agency. <laughs> All right. Good. Good, good. Okay. Um, moving along then. And are there restaurant inspections? Nicole, you want to talk about vendors and fairs and stuff? Um, I think since April, we've probably had a vendor event just about every weekend. Um, Jen and I have been pretty much tag teaming on those. There's been quite a few. Um, it's mostly all the same vendors that we see and I haven't really seen any issues. Everybody has been super compliant. We had a little couple hiccups in the beginning um, when they weren't showing up on time. Um, then, and we were leaving the office and waiting for them and they weren't gonna be there for a couple more hours. So we got that worked out. Nicole, did you have any properties you needed to discuss? I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, I think um, the biggest one I probably did was 20 Holland Ave, um, where we worked with the police department on it. Um, the story that goes along with it's probably not so happy, but it has a happy ending and it's going to be, um, transferred to a new owner. My dogs are going crazy because my mom's home. <laughs> And we are currently having a problem with another property um, that we have multiple agencies involved in on um, Leiden Road. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, and that one's going to be very challenging, is also also, but that one is currently under investigation. 
Oh, and I just want to say, like, the um, the dog park and, like, the homeless issue, like, it's like they're not even there. They're, they're, they've been totally awesome. Everything's been super clean. Um, I think Mr. Batch, it is, that's down at the dog park, is um, he's pretty much in control of everything and making sure that there's no trash and stuff left around. So that's really awesome. And I know the gentleman from Carl's or Carson's um, spoke to him too, and he left him in charge of that. And I think that's, they like that. They want to be included. Oh, that's such a relief. So the yeah. cam, the Carson's cam was moved to the unofficial dog park and things have been going well. Not the unofficial dog park, the dog park. Right. Oh, that's right. The dog park, but way in the back. <laughs> yeah. The unofficial dog park, that's another story. As for the homeless situation, um, a couple of things. Uh, there's been a question about the old Wedgwood Gardens, um, and Nicole and I visited that site. Right. Um, there's a couple of people that are um, questioning. Um, I got a call today. If the people there are paying taxes, I referred them to the assessor's office. Um because they don't feel they should be living there and they're not paying taxes, but those people, you know, so it's a becoming a thing, but I, I refer them to the assessor's office and to follow up with acting chief Gordon, because they're the ones that visit the site to make sure there's no one there after dark, uh, as it's posted. Um, we, uh, stop and shop had a, they reported us, <laughs> <laughs> they reported us, to the DEP uh, for trash, and um, and basically, I wrote to them and said that it is private property that they own, and they have to maintain the trash on that site. However, the health department would be more than happy to discuss with the population the emphasis on keeping that area clean and providing sharps containers and collecting them and that the police department would also remind them that littering is a crime and that there are fines involved, just like fines involved with the health department. Um, but the stop and shop was getting tired of cleaning up. So they wanted to write us up and say it was our fault for not maintaining their property. And uh, that was quickly, uh, we definitely got out of that complaint because it's private property and they have to clean it up. So I just wanted that there. In case we hear about it through the grapevine. I can't remember if I told you guys about 136 months in street with the squatters. I didn't. Oh boy. Okay. Um, I probably should go over that one. So basically Jen and I went out to a property on Munson street um, across from the life path building and this gentleman had invited um, some people into his house who said they're going to help him clean. Um, they stayed more than three days. So after you stay in a residence um, in Massachusetts for three days and are invited there, that is now your residential address. Um, so you would need to get a restraining order to have that person taken out um, and there would have to be a court case. So long story short, they moved all their stuff in got like this giant container, like as long as a tractor trailer truck and just filled up this guy's house and his yard and everything and just destroyed everything. He ended up having to sleep in his kitchen by the end of this whole thing. Um, and Jen and I went over there. We wrote him an order to correct. He was very serious about it. Um, he got the temporary restraining order right away kept calling the police every time he had an issue because he was very afraid of them after a while. They weren't like his real friends. Um, he was just lonely and wanted somebody to talk to, but, um, he completely cleaned that thing up. Um, he went to court. Those people are gone, no longer squatting. Um, and we got him involved with life path also. And he has like a buddy that he can call and talk to. So that was another success story. Well, I'm glad you shared that with us. It was like a, a whole story. You wrapped it all up. <laughs> <with that. laughs> you know, the onset. It, the was, it, was a, it was a long time. It was going yeah. on. 
and then actually got cleaned up really quickly. Great. And he's getting, yeah. and we did an elder at risk uh, form, so he's getting help. Yeah. Um, we have been filing lots of elder at risk forms because there's a lot of elders who are needing assistance and, and, um, and, and just, just need help. And, and we've been working and following life path extremely closely. Mm -hmm. I've been meeting with them about cases in particular that need to be followed up um, because those are our most vulnerable in some ways. And as of 136 months in, uh, can get easily taken advantage of um, and especially after three days, someone could say, I'm not leaving. And you, if you don't know, if you don't know those rules, you could have a really big problem. So, um, so yeah. So Nicole, was brought, yeah, brought to yeah. Our attention. Yeah. Good. Then we did have one complaint about, um, the dollar general on main street using plastic bags. Um, I spoke to the manager about that and she said that they had ran out over the weekend um, and they were getting a new shipment on Monday. And when I went back in there, they had paper bags again. I just told them if that something like that happens, they got to let us know. Otherwise, people are going to call and complain. Good. All right. All right, so we're done with uh, property, restaurant inspections, uh, public comment. Any public comment? Okay, Glenn. Being the only public present, um, I'd just like to give a quick comment. Thank you for uh, serving on the Board of Health, Nancy. Sorry to see you go. I hope that they can find a, a doctor to replace you. Um, since we are a city, we're supposed to have a doctor on the Board of Health. And I'm sure there are, it's gonna be hard to find someone. Um, I also wanna thank you for <clears throat> your recap of the meeting with John Ziegler concerning Lunt, something that I've been pretty involved in. And I, just want to put it on the record that I completely disagree with the mayor's position on continuing to use the LSP that works and is paid for by the real estate developer lawyer. Um, it's inappropriate. It's a conflict of interest. And I believe that it actually is a form of collusion that the mayor will be held responsible for colluding with the tenant in this regard. But um, the city council has passed a resolution of no confidence in the continued involvement of Bruce Nicholson and OTO. And that's about as politically strong as one can get in Greenfield at this point. So the mayor is for some reason sticking with the person that resulted in the city being issued a notice of non-compliance for numerous violations of the Massachusetts contingency plan regulations. And I am completely at a loss for her logic on that situation. But I do want to say that the, um, the Lunt Neighborhood Action Group will be applying for a technical assistance grant this year, the round, uh, there's more grants available and they're for up to $20,000. So we will be putting together an application for a technical assistance grant, submitting that to DEP. Unfortunately, the process takes a long time as most things with the state and the money will not Ultimately, it's a competitive grant and the money will not ultimately be available until the beginning of next year. However, that's I think our best option for getting real support for both the PIP group, the Lunt Neighborhood Action Group, and also for the Board of Health, because I am very concerned that the board is not being supported by the mayor as well you should have access to competent, 
qualified professional help, especially in this very technical area. It's not something that most people know anything about and you really deserve to have access to help, but that apparently is not gonna happen. Um, this is being handled and manipulated behind the scenes and I'm not happy with the way things are, but we are going to work to correct that. And so the one thing that I hope the board will consider, uh, the application is not due until I think September or October, the technical assistance grant application, but I hope the board will consider submitting a letter of support on behalf of the residents of the Lunt neighborhood in the application for the technical assistance grant. Um, I really appreciate the fact that you came to that meeting with John Ziegler. It was, I felt a very neutral space for us to meet in. And I would like to continue that working relationship with the board and, um, and I will, or, or someone, from the group will approach you with a letter requesting that you submit a letter of support along with, you know, we'll, we will be asking for a lot of other organizations or entities um, to also write letters of support. So you won't be the only ones. But anyway, that's, that's my feeling at this time. Um, we will be very involved in reviewing everything. And, and I do agree with you that John Ziegler made it very clear that DEP will be very involved in this process going forward. And that is very reassuring for everyone involved. So thank you. Um, so that's yeah. my comments. Thank you for listening to me and good luck, Nancy. Um, and I know that I'm sure the last few years during COVID were really difficult um, and I'm sorry to see you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Glenn. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, so moving on, uh, next meeting, I would like to suggest that we not plan a next meeting. Um, it will be up to the new chair, um, Alyssa, uh, to determine what's needed and uh, when the next meeting will be scheduled. So we're going to move off of that on to adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn the meeting. Great. All those in favor? Yay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate it. I appreciate all that you've done. I'm sorry in many ways not to be here again. And also I'm on to other things in my life. So I will see you one way or the other. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Nancy. Bye. Thank you.